Let's talk about the hamstrings and their functional relationship with the adductor magnus. Sometimes the hamstrings are just fine. They have strength, they have length, they have glide, they have everything they need and you feel wonderful. Sometimes, however, they, there is something going on. So either they are not letting go, they are holding on too strongly, no matter how much you stretch. Sometimes they are letting go too much and they are not functioning properly. And sometimes they are a bit overloaded and that can create um, different problems. And one that I commonly hear about is pain close to the sit bone, like a, a slight chronic inflammation where the tendon attaches to the bone. And now here is a thought worthwhile considering a shy away from stretching and overloading because often it's in people who are very able-bodied. So they have a good amount of length and they have a good amount of strength so they can load. Now here we need the adductor magnus. So let me draw a, a picture so you can vision, envision it more easily. Here's a body. The back of a body. And here are your hamstrings. This is the sit bone. Here are your hamstrings, and they are fascially connected to your lumbar extensors. Envision this green line here as a road. And when you are loading your body quite a lot, say you are doing a lot of practice, lengthening, strengthening, engaging, that road might be a little bit overloaded like a, like a freeway that has too much traffic and then you get some congestion somewhere and often this is at the attachment point, so here at the sit bone. Too much traffic, traffic represents force and you have congestion or you have that pain or that slight inflammation. What you can do now is call on the adductor magnus. Together with the short head of the biceps femoris, the adductor magnus forms the force hamstring muscle and it attaches on the inside of the sit bone and it is fascially connected to the pelvic floor. Now, when the adductor magnus has good strength, good length, in other words, good functionality, you can divert the force. It's like you're diverting traffic to another road and you have less congestion here in the hamstrings. And just a little tip beside that, if you are really doing a lot of practice or you are running or loading your body in a great way, it's also very, very good here to call on the gluteus maximus that goes into the latissimus dorsi on the other side because you can, actually that goes down here, you can divert even more traffic and then you are unloading your hamstrings even more. Then they probably have more flexibility, more strength, and you don't get these, um, if you ever experience them, these pains close to the sit bone. Now let's do one of my favorite movements to tap into the adductors and also call on the adductor magnus, which is an extensor adductor. The adductor brevis and longus are the flexors. You can join me here. Coming into a kneeling position, I will mirror you in the exercise. You are turning your right leg out, your lower leg, and then lift the right knee. So you are in this 90-90 gait pose. Place your right hand on the inside of the knee, place your left hand to the front of the pelvis, and then you are already abducted here. Glide into what I call a hip release position. So you are lengthening the adductors, and now lift a little bit, hold the position, the muscles are lengthened and now we engage them. So you are pressing your heel and your knee towards one another, engaging the adductors. Spiral the inner thigh out and around, that's also the adductors. Lift from the pubic bone, keep the adductors engaged here and then release and let the body lift. And now staying centered, as centered in your pelvis as you can in this slightly awkward position here. Glide into hip release and then recoil back up. 
So it's a sense of just letting the body weight shift to the side. You are gliding into a hip release position. The adductor muscles and the associated fascia work, elastically lengthening and then recoiling, that's the fascia, to lift you back up. So you have engaged the muscles before, you are still engaging the adductor muscles now, you are also engaging the fascia in an elastic manner, and you are increasing the strength in your adductors. By keeping the pelvis lifted, that sense of spiraling the leg out, you are also tapping into that adductor magnus a little bit more. Now let's do this one more time and then place your hand onto the floor, your right hand, take your left arm overhead, it's like your lateral angle pose, just in kneeling, press your knee and your heel towards one another again, engage your adductors one more time, and then release and recoil up. Turn the leg inward, bring the foot back so your legs are more in parallel or slightly wider. Place your hands to the front of the hips, fold forward, tilt the pelvis back and curl up. So you're engaging all of your hip extensors and then take a seat. If you would like to learn more about functional anatomy, you can join me in the online course Anatomy 201 at yogajournal.com. <laughs>